Hi, this is Eric Prostowski. Welcome to another segment of EP on EP. This is a, going to be a fun uh, session for me for two reasons. First of all, the topic I think is very important. But my guest today is Dr. Martin Ma Marin. I didn't say Barry Marin, <laughs> who I've worked with and all of us know for his pioneering work in the field of HCM. This is his son, Martin, who is the director of uh, the HCM Center at Leahy Medical Center. It's great to have you on the show, Eric, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. It's an honor to be here and to be talking with you. Well, uh, growing up, by the way, I heard a lot of stories about you, all of them good as oh, well. Oh, I was going to so say, don't tell them. All of them good, <laughs> and so it's great to be here with a legend like you. Oh, well. you're, you're, you're very right. kind. Well, our, our best to your dad, well, for I appreciate sure. That. So listen, um, you've done pioneering work in this area of uh, CMR and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Let me start with something kind of simple sure. for those of us who don't do it all the time. Talk to us about the techniques you use and how you quantify versus not. Fill us in on that. Yeah. So first, so so yeah. So I, you know, look, CMR, cardiovascular magnetic resonance imaging, has made a huge you know advancement for us in helping to refine risk stratification for HCM because it's it can basically tell us something that other imaging modalities have not been able to tell us. And that is looking into the muscle, into the, the, the ventricle in a way we haven't been able to before. And that's with gadolinium, intravenous contrast, which is taken up into the, to the, to the myocardium and areas of abnormal substrate, scar, essentially. It's telling us about scar in HCM. And so this contrast enhanced CMR with late gadolinium enhancement, LGE, is the technique you're talking about. And it's really a technique where we can not only see SCAR, but we can quantify it as well, using offline tools to get a number that expresses how much SCAR is in the ventricle and actually mm -hmm. in total amount of grams, and actually as well as a percent of the total LV mass. And what we found is that that has really now borne out pros in prospective studies as a very strong relationship between the amount of scar okay. and increasing risk for sudden death events in HCM. Right, so let me stop you there a little yeah. bit. Uh, I've been following this field for, for years because uh, as an electrophysiologist from the days when it was called electrophysiology, <laughs> not electrophotography, right. uh, uh, you know, we always knew that scar meant potential reentry circuits. Yep. But I, I want, before you get into the quantification with HCM, yeah. I, as I've read the literature, the, non, the, the dilated non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, it seems like even the presence of SCAR is a, a risk factor, and you don't have to have a tremendous amount. So what, there's a difference then in these yeah, two diseases, right? Can you tell us there about is. that? Absolutely, there's a difference between dilated cardiomyopathy um, and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in terms of that. And this is the deal. With hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the, if, you, if you scan a lot of patients with, with HCM um, with this technique, almost 60 to 70% have LGE or SCAR by MRI. So it's okay. really common. The okay. presence, the presence of it's SCAR, com common, right? So that makes it way too common for just the presence alone as a binary yes or no to be a risk marker itself. Okay. You begin planning everybody with yeah. this disease. So then that's when we moved on to quantification. Okay. okay? And there can be a range of amount of scar in this disease from, as we said, nothing to over 20% even in some patients. Okay. And so that is why quantification has become much more relevant than just presence or absence in HCM. And I've read some of your work on this. Um, mm -hmm. um, you give different levels, but I, when I've taken it to my own institution, they're, they're, they aren't always quite as, as Confident. Like five percent versus six yeah. percent, you know, they they sort of give me ranges, like it's less than ten and stuff. So, what what should the clinician? There's be a range of people out sure. there listening to this and using their local, uh, you know, MRI center. Uh, can you give us general guidelines? Like, when when should we be worried? What kind of a quantification is like? Uh oh, I got to seriously think about a risk yeah. for sudden death. Yeah. So if you if you're if you're collaborating with a a, a group of MRI. Uh, investigators um, who have experience with quantifying LGE, then you know what we see is that the quantification that comes out of experienced MRI labs, okay, 15% or more LGE, 15% okay. more SCAR. So 15% SCAR occupying the LV mass. So can I stop yeah. you? Does, that, does it matter if it's some on the free wall, some in the septum, it's just- a Anywhere. Oh, anywhere, so fifteen percent total. total. Anywhere, okay, that's exactly right. Okay, that's it. and we'll come back maybe because that's an important point about location in a second. But okay. right now, when we're talking about quantification for LG and HCM, it's about total amount. Okay, anywhere, 
And when you get to a point, uh, a threshold of 15% or more, that's a lot of scar. Okay. And that threshold has become relevant as a cut off point okay. because that identifies patients that are at twofold greater risk for sudden death events than less than 15%. Okay? So I've been impressed that it's a better strat risk stratifier than some of the classic things that your dad was involved in many years ago when we didn't have these techniques. Uh, for example, um, non-sustained VT. Yep. I mean, so yep. you've been influential in this area. Mm -hmm. Where do you think we should place this in a guideline? I, I understand maybe it's not there yet, but how should this clinician, how should Eric Prostowski look at this patient? He says, okay, he doesn't have 30 millimeter septum. Okay. And he's not had syncope. Right. And I'm looking at other things. So he's got a maybe, you know, two centimeters and, and um, he's got X amount of scar, 15%. Is that do you feel that should be the point where I say this is a two-way indication for maybe an ICD? Yeah. So he, here's here's how I would he, here's how here's what I would say. This is the deal. If you've got a patient, young middle-aged HCM patient, who has a lot of scar on CMR imaging, you know, 15 percent or more, or visually has a lot of scar, then that alone is now a risk marker based on the 2020. HCM guidelines, yes. that it would be alone, even without any other risk markers, that alone, it would be reasonable to consider primary prevention in that patient. That It's a 2B indication, which means it's reasonable to consider device. Okay. So we did open that up as an opportunity for patients to get devices in that situation. Okay. I will tell you, based on my own clinical practice, you know, in, in terms of HCM, perhaps the most relevant, more relevant, because it's more common situation where CMR is helpful, as is, is as an arbitrator for helping to decide so, about deciding. So, tell me, so give so, me an example. So let's say you have a younger middle-aged patient and you've got a patient, uh, and that, that patient has a, a wall thickness that's 25 millimeters, okay? Right. And they've got one run of NSVT on ambulatory monitor, right. but they're young and you're concerned that that is you know, possibly an increased risk situation. The patient themselves is a little bit on the fence because it's long-term device therapy but you get the MRI and you see a lot of scar. That's really helpful there because yeah. that sways the pendulum. Actually, I'm delighted to hear you say that because I've kind of been doing that yeah. and didn't know if it was like the right approach, but- um, As usual, you're right on. No, that is Well, right. at least this time. No, you are, you're absolutely <laughs> Anytime right. I'm okay with it, the Marin backs me up, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, so let me ask you this. We started yeah. to talk about this before, location, and also yeah. I want to ask you this. Yeah. Um, is, have you found out that the burden of scar is related also to the burden of hypertrophy or in other words, d yeah. is it just the more hypertrophy, the more scar, or is there a, a disconnect there? There is a little bit. So there is a relationship. There is a statistically significant relationship between the amount of LV mass or hypertrophy and increasing scar, but it's weak. It it's is weak. weak. It's weak. So, so you could have even an 18 millimeter septum in 20% scar. We see it. Exactly yeah, right. So, so those have to be looked at as separate. Independent, is, separate. That's, that's why great. we do the scan, yeah. otherwise, right. So, so tell me about the areas you started to yeah, mention. Yeah, so I mean, there was this hope originally that, that pattern of the SCAR or LG would be helpful here, that there would be certain patterns or locations that would be more high risk or relevant to decision making than just the amount. And the reality, unfortunately, is that it's just too heterogeneous. There is no really reliable SCAR pattern in HCM. It, it, it's just all over the map, okay. really including location, specific okay, location. So that doesn't matter. Didn't pan out. One, one last thing. Um, there's so many genetic variations. Have you guys tried to put together, is there any like genetic variation that's more prone to a scar? Is there any, is, what have you guys found out looking at that? Not really. There's a little, the, the evidence is that if you've got a sarcomere mutation, a pathogenic sarcomere mutation, you're a little bit more likely to have LGE than okay. if you have no mutation with HCM. Okay. But there's a lot of overlap there. Gotcha. You know? And so there's no specific mutation that drives that, no. Martin, this has been a yep. very educational thing. Yep. And I want to say, yep. just on a personal level, having known your father, you know, Barry Marin for decades, it's so nice to see this generational continuity. Uh, your dad, did so many things for the field, yeah. and looks like you're going to keep doing that. Well, thank you very Th much. I appreciate that. Thank you that. for being thank part you. of us. Appreciate today. it very much. Thanks. Thank you.